Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Jim here and it's Sunday, which means it is time for episode number five of Would I Rebuy This Guitar? And the guitar in question is a Fender, Tom DeLong, signature Stratocaster. Now I'm just gonna get this out of the way. The only reason I am doing this guitar now, I had another one planned, is because I was looking at my Craigslist because I always do looking for deals. I saw one of these go up for sale for $2,000 and I thought the guy was out of his mind. I went to Reverb, and his price wasn't that nuts. These things sell for like anywhere from $14 to $2,200, depending on the color and condition. Madness. In 2009, I was in recording school in Orlando, Florida. I had still only really ever had eyes for one guitar, and that was my white Stratocaster, which I still have to this day and will never sell. And I decided I really wanted to get something a little bit more aggressive sounding from my playing. Now throughout my teenage years, I was a big fan of punk rock and more aggressive kind of tones and I never really understood why my Stratocaster through my vintage Music Man tube amp was never able to get there no matter what pedal I put in front of it. I know, I know. So I was cruising my Craigslist then and found this guitar. It had a humbucker in it. And I thought to myself, well, Gibsons have humbuckers and a lot of the aggressive guitars like PRSs and those that people play in these punk rock bands, they have humbuckers too. So if I get one of these, I'm gonna be all set to go and I'm gonna get the sound that I want. The guy was asking $300 for the guitar with a hard case. And I said, sounds good to me. I went and checked it out. I did not play it. I just wanted to make sure it didn't have any major cosmetic damage because at the time I really wasn't even that smart about what to look for or not look for when I was buying a guitar. Now when I got home, that's when everything started to turn upside down from what I knew and what I didn't know. For starters, when I started to play this guitar, I noticed something I had never noticed before. The frets were really bad. And I don't mean worn, I mean sharp. The guitar physically kind of almost like hurt to play compared to my Strat. It kind of gave me a, wow, my Strat's really pretty good kind of reminder here. And the overall, ne the neck, it didn't feel very, very good. It felt kind of cheap. And, you know, I didn't know much about guitars at the time. I didn't know how to fix a lot of these problems. I just kind of was disappointed by that. But what was more disappointing was when I plugged the guitar into my little Vox AC4 half stack, no sound was coming out. So me, not knowing a damn thing about anything at this point, frantically started to call some friends saying, I think I got ripped off, this guitar doesn't work. When I sent them pictures, they laughed. A few people, literally, they did laugh. So it turns out, this was an active EMG pickup, which requires a nine volt battery to give power to work. So I took out my trusty screwdriver, undid the pick guard, went to the cavity, and sure enough, there was no 9 volt plugged in. What the hell is this guy doing to this day? I don't know. But went to CVS, picked up a 9 volt, put it in, and we had sound. And that's where the second eye opening thing happened. Now, obviously, I skipped the cleans as my first tone. I turned the gain all the way up on the little Vox stack and then stomped on my Marshall Drive Master to give it that extra kind of boost that, that I really wanted to get, that aggressive sound, and it sounded pretty good. It sounded a lot bigger than my normal Strat with the single coils did. However, when I turned that off and I went to the clean, I was in for the big realization. Active pickups and passive pickups are very, very different. Now, I didn't know if it was this specific pickup. I didn't know if it was because it was battery powered. I didn't know anything at this point. All I knew was, I hated the way this guitar sounded clean. I was not a fan whatsoever. But I figured to myself, you know, you have your Strat with the single coil pickups in it. If you want to do clean, you do the clean parts with those. You want to do distortion, you do distortion with the Tom DeLong. There you go, problem solved, right? So I took the guitar into for a setup, and when I was there, I saw a few other Mexican guitars, and I was, you know, I just wanted to try them because I, I liked standing around the shops and kind of waiting. He wasn't a very busy shop, and he was able to get things done within an hour or two, so I would just hang out. I tried a 70 Strat, a 60 Strat, and I think a Deluxe Roadhouse. I'm not sure if that's what it was. It was something like that, though. And all of them kind of had the same problems, except the 70 Strat. None of the fretwork was good. 
none of them really were built all that well. And when I started to talk to the guy at the shop, he's like, well, they're Mexican, you know, they're a little bit of a step below the American models. And here I am thinking, wait, what? A guitar is a guitar. How come this is so much different? And he started to explain to me, look, I could fix your frets. I could make your guitar, you know, feel and play a lot better. And I said, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna let it go and kind of just play with it as is and try and force the thing to work. But eventually I got so sick of even the EMG sound with the gain that I bought a set of Seymour Duncan hot rails. <laughs> oh God. And I installed those myself. It was one of my first soldering jobs into the guitar. So it had three single coils, but they were the hot rails and it just, it didn't work out for me. And it taught me a valuable lesson. So I started to do a lot of research and I realized a lot of these people we're using Gibsons and we're using PRSs and Jacksons and Ibanezes and ESPs and all these and almost none of the bands that I listen to bar one use Defender and I thought you know what I think I think I'm ready to do this and without having this Tom DeLong, I would have never bought my first real Gibson Les Paul so I owe it to that guitar for that also without this guitar I would have never learned about active pickups so that's another thing that, you know, I didn't lose any money on it. I gained a lot of experience and I gained a lot of knowledge. So I kind of figured out what I wanted. I learned a little bit more about construction and then the ball started rolling from there. So I'm going to get right to the point. Would I rebuy this guitar? Not in a million years. There is no way. If I really wanted a guitar with one of those cool, unique finishes like Graffiti Yellow, I would do a parts caster and then put on a much higher quality neck and save myself $1,000 minimum on the guitar. I'm sure that there's good ones of these. I probably just got a bad one. But I mean, when I look at the value, like I said, the only reason I started doing this was because I saw how much they sell for. I thought my mind was blown. I couldn't believe it. But if I were you and I had a signature series guitar from any brand, I would go on a reverb and I would see how much they're selling for. You might be really, really surprised. And that is the brief history and story and final verdict on the Tom DeLonge Stratocaster. Highly doubt you're going to see me with another one of those. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please leave me a like. If you want, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about Fenders from the late 90s and early 2000s. What are your experiences? The only good? Only bad? Or is it a mixed bag, kind of like what I have? Let me know. And I got some good content lined up for this week. One video I'm putting a lot of work into, more than others. And I'm really excited for it. So, until then, I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.